Welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, episode 69, entitled Using Elementor, You Need Katka from Barna Buxbaum. This episode was published on the 29th of March 2018. My name's Nathan Wrigley from Picture and Word, a web development agency based in the north of England, and I'll be joined later by Barna Buxbaum, but also by David Wormsley from davidwormsley.com. Today, we've got three sections. We've got the discussion section, which is entitled Freelancing versus Running a Business. We've got the main event, which is talking to Barna about his Katka project, which ties in nicely with Elementor. And finally, we've got the ending fact, which is entitled Attention Span or Lack of. Please go to the WP Builds website uh, at wpbuilds.com and you can click on any of the buttons underneath the player and uh, we'd very much appreciate five star reviews and all of that business please 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 it really does help also if you go to wpbuilds.com forward slash facebook you can find our facebook group forward slash subscribe to subscribe to our newsletter forward slash advertise to advertise on the podcast and new forward slash YouTube because I'm now putting these things on YouTube. Um, If you're getting this on a podcast player, it's exactly the same thing, just with a pretty picture. (laughs) I just thought it might be a nice different channel to put things into. Um, Also, at the moment, we have a competition running. It's running for another week or so. It's for three lifetime licenses for the Wallace Inline editor for Beaver Builder. And also, not so much a competition, but just to repeat that main WP, the sort of hub center plugin where you can update all of your WordPress websites, um, they're also offering a 25% discount if you use the coupon code WPBUILDS, no spaces, all capital letters. Before we begin the podcast proper, a quick word from our sponsor, which this week is No Fear Funnels. No Fear Funnels is a course for non-marketer web designers. It's going to teach you how to implement sales funnels for any client or business, even the boring ones, so that you can get proven return on investment and results. And if you can do that, you can attract better paying clients and charge more for their websites. Lots of designers are struggling to stay afloat because they're pitching websites like it's 1999. You might have heard of sales funnels, but think they're only for marketeers or marketing brains or that you need expensive software to do this. Well, that's not so. You can use the tools that you use to build websites every day, WordPress and Elementor. Dave Foy, the course tutor, has implemented these exact methods himself, both for clients and in his own successful business, and he's had amazing results. There's no other premium WordPress and Elementor training like it, and it's the perfect time, what with all the excitement surrounding the release of Elementor 2.0. There's a huge discount for pre-ordering right now. It's going to be $197 now, but it'll be rising to $347 when the course launches properly later in the year. So you'll be saving $150. The first lessons will be released to the rest of the world in early May, and Dave will be encouraging regular student feedback to shape the course best for everybody's needs. And there's also going to be a private Facebook group and group coaching calls. So get in on No Fear Funnels as an early adopter and help your business as well as shape the course that Dave's going to be putting together. We'd like to thank No Fear Funnels for their support of the WP Builds podcast. Okay, after the discussion between David and I, we'll go over to speak to Barna Buxbaum about his Katka project, which is a giant library of templates for the Elementor page builder. So if you're using Elementor, um, this is certainly worth checking out because he's giving it away for free and we find out why he does that because it's very, very generous of him. And we also find out about his new work with Tom over at Generate Press for Generate Press Sites. So... Stay tuned for that, but right now we'll pass you over to David and I for our weekly discussion. And this discussion is called Freelancing versus Running a Business. So, we don't know where we're going with this one, do we, Nathan? Because we've been having quite a chat. Mm. I think think basically it can be summed up in... Well, first of all, we should probably draw... Draw, draw out the distinction between what is a freelancer yes. and what running a business is. Now, 
firstly, to confess, I don't run a business. I never have run a business, um, like a, you know, a business where I'm in charge of employees, but I've certainly worked in businesses in the past. So I, I know what I'm on about in that sense. But I guess a freelancer is somebody that basically works for themselves, goes out and seeks, seeks employment um, for themselves. Um, whereas a business is somewhere where you're more or less obliged to show up on a regular basis, sign a contract and kind of do what you're told. Is that about right? Yeah, I think so. I feel that um, freelancing is getting a bit of a, a, a bad rap at the moment because it's generally phrased, I think, as freelancers are exchanging their time for money, mm. where the the businesses or entrepreneurs are, you know, they're setting up systems and will have employees and remove themselves from the direct involvement. And that seems that's kind of been the way forward. And there's one book I've mentioned over and over. Um, so it's probably getting a bit tedious, which is the E-Myth Revisited. And there's another one, Built to Sell, which I read, which was a great influence on me because they, for the first time, revealed to me that, you know, working for yourself isn't kind of scalable. So you do need to set up systems. So if, if more work comes in, you can do that. Uh, and it's really impacted on about the way that I'm trying to set up my business. So I am setting up those systems. But, you know, as time's gone on, I think, well, actually, <laughs> there's some downsides as well. Not all businesses need to scale and maybe shouldn't scale. I think... Um... I, I'm of a certain age now, shall we say, you know, you, I've had mm. enough time on this planet to kind of work out what I am like and what I need. Um, and there's a there's a part of me that would um, like to think that it would be good for me to have a business and employees and all of that. But I think, uh, you know, I'll come back in five years and eat my words, but I think I know myself well enough to know that actually I'm not really suited to running a business um, and and it's it comes down I think to my personality traits I I'm I think I'd be a difficult boss to work for because I think I would expect people to just do it in a certain way my way um, mm -hmm. and they're they've always been my worst bosses the exact same person that I am um, <laughs> you know because because I've been doing this freelancing thing for so long I, I just have a way of doing it um, and I would. I guess I would expect people to just, um, you know, toe the line and do it my way. And I'd find it very hard to say, uh, no, just get on with it however you like and get, bring it to me when it's done. Yes. Um, but I was saying to you before we began the call that I, I did actually do some work for somebody years ago now who had exactly that approach, you know, uh, day one turned up. I was, as it happens, you know, it kind of felt like I was freelancing for this person, but it was in their offices and showed up and, Basically, just got told in very anecdotal terms. Right, here's a. We need this thing to happen. I think it was it was a it was a magento thing, if I believe, if my memory serves. And it was about a. Mo you remember when you had um, specific websites for specific devices, and they needed they yeah. needed an iPhone version of the site. Anyway, that was going to be my job, but I'd never really used magento much. And he just sort of said, "Oh, so we need it to." this site to go on an iPhone and look good. Um, just sort of get on with it. Um, here's the here's the SSH keys for everything. Um, you know, give us a shout when uh, either when it's done or when you run into a problem, and that was it. And I thought, yeah. man, that's trust. And, of course, yeah. I behaved very well and got on with it and just figured it all out with a bit of help here and there. But I couldn't be that person, I don't think. And yet they would be the person I would want to be. Yes, I, I, but I think it's, it depends on how precious these things are to you. I mean, I was I was a manager for for many years, and I was that boss, if you like, the the relaxed one who would say, "Don't listen to me, listen to your colleagues; they're better than me." And I was a rare boss amongst my peers mm. for that, but it kind of worked, and it, it let me off the hook because I didn't have to be the expert at stuff, and it encouraged them to, you know, feel they had their their own autonomy. But I think it might be different if trying to apply that to something where my money is going to be lost as a result of it. And, yeah. and my, and it's my name on the door. Yeah. So <laughs> at that point, so this wasn't a business you owned, you were on a salary. And mm -hmm. so you, I guess you felt comfortable making decisions like that, knowing that, yeah, it's, it's a job. I can get another job, but you're right. If you were, if you were turning 
the cogs on your own business and it was your own money. I wonder, I wonder if you would have had that same laissez-faire approach. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it would be slightly different trying to apply it now to you know, my own business than it was working for somebody else and their business. You know, they could afford it. They, you know, money. We could be more relaxed with our way because if it worked, and it did work. You know, giving people that autonomy worked. They they didn't let me down. You know, and so it was a. I felt happy being a boss mm. then because it wasn't a role that I felt very comfortable in. I became a manager mm. <laughs> uh, to these people uh, without knowing what a manager should be. So I just kind of made it up and, and it seemed to be just involving teamwork. But I suppose you could do that, couldn't you? If you're, you could scale up in a business, I guess, if you felt that like you had peers that you were working with. I know that would be more like partnership, but you, you know, you could sort of move from freelancer to business if you could, um, find that sort of shared trust. It's the trajectory, though, isn't it? It's the sort of expected tra- trajectory of a freelancer mm. that they that they want to r- get a business, and it you know, and that the the expectation is that the freelancing is is really just a stepping stone to having your own business, um, mm. and that you know, given enough time and the right wind in the sails. Five years down the road, there'll be you at the top of this pyramid and there'll be employees underneath you um, all doing, you know, the necessary stuff that's required in order to make the business run. And that just never really appealed to me. Um, yeah, it's just it's just not a step I want to take. I, I mean, for a start, again, like I was saying to you, I would I would find it terribly difficult staring over somebody's shoulder um, knowing that my job was to manage their time and make yes. sure that they were productive and that ultimately, you know, there was revenue flowing through the business where it, I'd find it hard to watch them actually on the computer because I would absolutely know that that's what I want to do. I want to be on the computer doing what you're doing. <laughs> yes. No, I can understand. And I think if you started to run a business, then you have to let go and take a, a an overview of the situation. So I guess you're not doing the thing that you, you love in the same way. And you're going to start looking at reports. You're going to start looking at your profits more than anything rather than the service. So I think there's some downsides, isn't there, for yeah. running a business? Yeah, and, I mean, and those I'll, details are just not interested in, really. It just, just, <laughs> it's just not me. Um, I'd rather not look at reports about profit and loss. I'd rather just stare at my bank balance, um, yes. you know, rather than sweat. And also the... the I don't know that I'd be the person to cope with, um, you, you know, if the business was very successful and you could happily pay your employees every month, no problem. That would be lovely, but presumably there must be moments where it's entirely the opposite and you are really nervous about everybody's future and having to make people redundant and uh, all of those things and keep everybody happy all the time. I would I would really struggle with that. Yeah. I, I guess the, the thing that I said a lot and that must come from emyth revisited which is um <clears throat> you need to uh work on your business rather than in your business and i think you know that's that's the the main sort of criticism if you like on mm. freelancers mm. That, that they can spend so long just doing the jobs and then the the work dries up um because they've not been concentrating on looking to the future and getting new business in and that kind of stuff mm. i think i'm like a lot of us, I'm sure. I think I'm definitely guilty of that. You get completely consumed in what you're doing on a day-to-day basis, and don't don't try and grow it. But then I suppose equally, there's something to be said for not necessarily growing it, but just maintaining it. You know, if it's ticking along nicely and there's there's mm. lots of lots of possibilities in the in the future. Well, that's I think I think there's something equally good about that. Yeah. Well, I'm full of admiration for a couple of people who I consider freelancers. Mm. Uh, I was mentioning them earlier, you know, uh, Chantal, Edward Betsy and, and uh, Katie O'Brien. They're great freelancers mm. who are in demand. And, and of course, I, in some ways, you can keep those businesses running, like as you do as well with care plans and stuff. You yes. can still be a freelancer and not go out of business because you, in that way, you are running it like a business. You've got systems for that in place. Yeah, the I mean, I suppose the you you can't really avoid the fact that you are in effect a business. You're a business of one. Um, you know, you've still got to you've still got to file your tax. You've still got to um, you know maintain some kind of office environment and all of those kind of things um, and t- take a profit and all of that. But it, I guess for me, the step which is 
just the step too far is is the the responsibility for other employees but also yeah. the ability to let go and i know that's a i know that in many people's eyes that will be a a failing of mine um but but actually i'm i'm certainly at this point you know on the 16th of march 2018 i'm really happy with with that um that, yes. that lack of desiring to have a, a bigger business and that that desire only to to just keep working um, for me and my clients. Yeah. Don't you think there's a, a big dominance really? And maybe it's just what I come across, but there's a big focus on being an entrepreneur now, like there's never been before. Um, and I think that's leading everybody towards certain things like all the cool kids. Now they really, all the Western cool kids, at least, you know, always looking to see whether they can hire for their businesses overseas so they can get pay relatively less, yeah, I and, think yeah, there's a lot of people doing that, isn't there? Uh, yeah, and it uh, it scares me no end actually because I I find you know there would be just as many risks I would have thought as um, paying somebody locally to do tasks for you. Um, I, I've never hired anybody um, out of my of the UK, um, so I can't really speak from experience. But I wonder if um, I wonder if it's you know, obviously it's driven by cost. Um, if you hire yeah. somebody in a, a different part of the world where it's significantly cheaper and you are, you are able to overcome the, the process barriers, you can presumably get the same work done for a fraction of the cost. Um, yeah. But you've still, got to, you've still got to establish trust and you've still got to have those processes and you've still got to know that they are going to do the work in the same way. And that's, that's the barrier. Like I said, that's the barrier that I'm always going to struggle with is handing it over and just trusting somebody um, to just get on with it and be moral and turn in good yeah. quality stuff. I, I, I would struggle with that. But I, I agree. I wonder, um, I wonder how many people do that back to front. That is to say that they, you know, as soon as they've got a little bit of work, they then hire people overseas to do that work so that then they mm. can find new work to hire more people overseas. So if you like, yes. they're, they're trying to turn a freelance business into a, a bigger business quickly. The only people that I know who've been successful with this are people who have been literally on their knees busy, um, yeah. who've then at the point where they could not cope anymore, have decided to um, find other alternative places uh, for their, for their, freelancers if you like yes I, and i think that's what i was saying about with the, the stuff being for entrepreneurs now i think often people are prescribing a type of business so people think i'm going to set up my business in that model it's going to employ people overseas i'm going to set up systems and they're going to follow them right from the start before any real business has come in mm. and i think that's that seems really uh, quite something to jump into really yeah I, I mean i guess you've got to have a, a bucket load of cash haven't you and just hope it's yeah. all going to work out yeah and the more that we talk about this we've been going at it for about 15 minutes the more that we talk about it the, the more it it's obvious to me that it, i think it's my personality that's making me a freelancer i don't really enjoy um being told what to do is that that's yeah. far too broad a term you know i'm quite happy to be told what to do in all sorts of ways but i do like the the option to just do what i like um certainly regarding times of day that's a big thing for me you know yeah. the ability well at night now here we are it's mm. it's 11 o'clock in the morning um, and I, if I was working in a business, I would be, I'd have my bum on a seat right now doing something for somebody else. Whereas I'm talking to you and I like yeah. that. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm not, not particularly good at taking orders. Um, and neither do I think I'd be very effective at giving orders because I think I would be like, it's my way or the highway. Um, and whilst I would try to do that in a nice way, I, I think I wouldn't be a very good boss. <laughs> <laughs> and also maybe there's something you know what people are looking for when they set up businesses if they're going for that kind of process and they're doing i'm i'm assuming which is i suppose what businesses are supposed to be about making a profit you know the the focus is primarily then on the on the money yeah i mean it's got to be hasn't it that must be the primary focus of all of all businesses um mm. yeah i'm trying to think if that's true, I mean, obviously charities is somewhat different. And I know that people will argue that, well, the purpose of a business is to provide a service first and all of that. But, you know, you can't have that service being provided unless you're able to 
pay the staff that are doing it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So freelancing for me, David, every time. Yeah, I guess I don't actually I don't know what I am or what I'm trying to set up at the moment, because in some ways I am setting it up around the e-myth revisited on trying to set up processes. But and, you know, the idea is that we will we will take people on. It will you know do some of the designing for people if we can grow bigger. But I do realize I'm very much of the same mentality as you. And it primarily primarily I'm not motivated by the money. I just need yeah. enough money to enjoy doing the thing. I like doing yeah and i think it's that way round um so, <laughs> yeah so i I'm, I'm not quite sure you can learn from you can learn from this uh, from from that book even if you're going to stay as a freelancer i think but there are there are things really about i think just setting up systems which is difficult because the book very much i think it does i could be wrong it's been a while since i read it but i think it's sort of um, uses McDonald's as its kind of model about how they work. Everything is systemized, so anybody can kind of come in as staff and you can flip a burger for one minute or whatever and turn it over and you know what you're doing. And the same can be true of taking money and the and everything really in McDonald's can be set up as a system. But I'm not sure in the creative fields whether that's possible and the technological fields where the systems are going to change that we use. Do you know, um, it just suddenly occurs to me that I might have read this book and got fed <laughs> up with it and put it down. Is this the book where the whole premise is you're building your business to sell it? Ah, no, that's that's the other one that I probably... The Built to Sell, that's uh, John Warrillow. Oh, I don't know. But I, anyway, that, that didn't chime with me very well. The idea that... You put all these processes yeah. in place so that at the at the moment, you know, the whole point of all of it is that at some point in the future, you can flog it because you've yes. got your processes and, and it's obvious to the person interested in buying it. OK, we can just take it over and here's the manual, if you like. And that, yes. I just didn't like that. I just didn't like that thought that that's all it distilled down to. It just all of it basically distills down to a manual that you can hand over. There's my life's work. Um, now, of course you know, I'll be eating my words in 20 years time when it's time for my retirement and I've got no manual to hand over. But, yeah. you know. Well, I think, yeah, I agree. That book, uh, it probably is the same book. And as I remember it as well, it was, that was the problem for me with it really. Particularly as at this point, you know, I was relaxing on the beach in Goa anyway. So the idea, the premise really <laughs> is that you can build up this great business so you can sell it off at the end of it and sit on the beach in Goa seemed all a bit pointless. Why don't I just cut out the middle man? <laughs> <laughs> just go and sit out on the beach in Goa and do yes. the work at the same time. Yeah, brilliant. Right, I think we're um, we're 19 minutes in. I think we should um, call it a day. I do too. Okay, we'll head off to the interview. Hello and welcome to another episode of the WP Builds podcast. Today, all the way from, well, I was going to say Hungary, that's not entirely true. All the way from the UK, I have Barna Buxbaum, who's here today to talk to us about his many endeavours, most of which are amazingly for free. Hi there, Barna, how are you? Hi Nathan, thank you for inviting me. You are very welcome. Now, the reason we've got Barna on largely is because of all the great stuff that he's been doing recently. Um, I actually met him about, oh, what are we talking now, five months ago or so at, at WordCamp in Manchester. And at that point, I was introduced to him by a friend of both of ours called Paul Lacey, who's been on the podcast. Um, and he was telling me about some of the endeavours that Barna was involved in, uh, most notably something called uh, Katka, which is a template pack for the increasingly popular Elementor page builder. And we'll get onto that in a moment. But um, first of all, um, Barna, how did you how did you become to be involved in in WordPress? How did you get to this point? Well, that's a really good question. Um... I think I started out like most other people as well, that I just wanted a simple website for myself. Mm. So it started with a simple photography website because I was doing um, photography at that time. Okay. And uh, ended up with a non-profit project for the Hungarian community in the UK, basically just like an info, um, like an information uh, related website. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, while I was doing all this, I became more and more of a pro user in WordPress, 
and started to do websites for others as well. Did you dabble with other things? Like, have, have you got an interest in, you know, raw HTML or other CMSs like Drupal, or were you straight into WordPress from the start? Um, I actually used Joomla uh-huh. way before WordPress, yep. but mm. that was like a, a different, like, uh, like a community site. Mm. And uh, really quickly had enough of it because it was just kind of... Uh, it was too much. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way of good way of sidestepping <laughs> that question. Yeah, that's good. So, uh, fast forward to today, you've got um, well, you've kind of hitched yourself onto the Elementor page builder. Um, how did you how did you decide that page builders were the thing that you were going to use? I know in my case, it was just it, it was a simple question of you know it just made everything so much quicker and so much easier. Um, it, is that what happened to you? You wanted to do things quickly? Yes. Um, I, I, I literally learned HTML, CSS, and PHP while back uh, many, many years ago. But I only managed to get to a certain point because, with all honesty, I got bored of it. Mm. So that might not be the best thing to say, but no, it's, that's the I truth. Understand. Yep. <laughs> so... I was looking for other solutions, and at that point, Elementor didn't exist. But as years went by, luckily, Elementor came along, and I fell in love with it. So it made my life super easy. Um, I have certain clients who really love it as well, because they can do things super simply. And because of all this, I managed to create this Katka resource that... Every, everyone can actually use in the same fast and easy fashion as they use Elementor anyway. Uh, we should probably say, although you probably know this already, that Elementor is a largely free page builder uh, yeah. for WordPress, which enables you to drag elements onto the page and interact with them directly. So basically what you see is really what you get. Now, so this thing, Katka, uh, which is spelled K-A-T-K-A, you can uh, Google Elementor Katka and very quickly you'll uh, you'll come across Barna's website. I think it, uh, currently it's the second result or possibly the third. Um, it's a suite, I'm going to call it a suite, of templates that you... Now, I don't know if I'm getting the word incorrect in the, um, in the Elementor world. I'm going to use the word templates. Um, templates which you can add on to Elementor um, and basically you've done the design for common elements that somebody building a website quickly would want to have. Now this is huge Um, and when I say huge I'm not really exaggerating. You must have spent a very very long time putting this together. Why did you decide to do this? Um First of all, I wanted to make my life easier mm-hmm. by creating a, a huge suite that, that will be able to be used whenever I need it. And the most important part is that I always try to help the community in whichever way I can. Now, the thing that I'm not a developer, so if I have an amazing plugin idea, sadly, I'm unable to do that. Mm-hmm. So... Katka became my kind of contribution to the community. Like, hey, everyone, thanks for the years of supporting my uh, advance in WordPress. Here's something that I can do for you. So um, Katka became the resource that I can give to the community. Um, And when you say give, you really do mean give, don't you? That that is to say it is entirely (laughs) and utterly completely free. Yes, that is true. Was that the plan? Did you plan to give it away for nothing? Was or did it just it was a happy coincidence? Um, originally, I wanted to make it a paid for um, addition for your Elementor project. Okay, but uh, this is this is mainly because I was spending months to to make it right to to get everything right from the very beginning. So uh, I, I had to kind of justify somehow the costs. Yep. Uh, but with all honesty, in the very last week, I just chose to let's just put together a landing page, get the whole pack up and running and just give it away for free. And there you go. Let it go. <laughs> well, 
Well, um, before we got um, talking on the recording, we we talked about how that was possibly the best decision you'll have made. Um, but before we get on to that and the consequences of making that decision, maybe we could just maybe you could just literally explain um, what is in Katka, how, how many how many elements, what kind of elements, and so on. So a, a little bit of a description of what we'd find when we unpacked Katka and started using it within Elementor. Yeah, so Kotka was basically to create like a wireframing tool. Mm -hmm. So compared to other template packs or templates available for like full pages and and, and so on, the the main point of Kotka is to to give you pre-designed sections, but not pre-styled. So whenever you're literally playing Lego with your Kotka sections, you you have everything as a structure but there are no styling in it so so instead of getting something pre-done for you that you need to restyle redo and so on and so on instead of that you're just getting the structural elements prepared for your own style so yeah no you you carry on no oh, thank you so so yes katka is is mainly like a just a section based pre-designed structural elements for wireframing. And uh, the whole idea behind was that whenever you buy or download a template, a page template or section template or or, uh, or full website template, usually these pre-styled ones are making your work much slower mm. because you have to go in and change everything one by one. Yeah. What I did with Katka is to go the other way. Instead of giving people another tool to butcher and and uh, <laughs> play with the styling, because that's what we all do, um, I just gave them the structural elements. There are no styling. So, for example, if you create your whole page with Katka sections and uh, you wanted to change the fonts, because all the sections have uh, set, to, all the fonts are set to default. If you change your global font in in Elementor or in the theme that you're using, what what everything should be using, mm-hmm. it will change the font to a, uh, to a different one everywhere. Yeah. So you don't have to go in one by one and change everything. Yeah, perfect. That's how it should be, isn't it? Yeah. Now, now you've got. I'm looking on the. Um, well, it's Elementor, which is E L E M E N T O R. And then template pack, all as one word, dot com website, um, which is where you can find uh, Katka. Um, you've, you've kind of broken it down into what's that, four, eight, 12, 14 sections. So, for example, you've got, um, you've got templates for the content area, you've got templates for header and navigation, forms. I won't list them all, but there's testimonials, call to action, uh, pricing tables, all the, all the stuff that we've come to expect from these. But Am I reading this correctly? There's 170 different templates within this pack. At the moment, yes. <laughs> so many. <laughs> and all of these are simply a guideline to... I mean, basically what you're doing is you're giving everybody a, a bit of a kick up the backside to get things done more quickly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um. So 170 bits. How, how long did this actually take? Um... There is a little secret part behind it because started out as as a Elementor Pro pages. Uh-huh. So the templates that I started with were, were uh, created for for like full pages. But uh, in the meantime, I was working on the sections as well. So it was like a parallel project next to each other. I see. Yeah. And because of that, I actually. Well, I can say I messed up my own life because it took me so long. It was almost four months in the end. Wow. Wow, wow, so wow. instead of that, I just put the page aside, concentrated on the sections and uh, let it go in the wild. And now I just released uh, Katka 1.2, if if I may even call it 1.2, that has started off with Katka pages. So that's another decision that I made that these pages will be available for free. Amazing. I mean, months and months of work for absolutely nothing. So that kind of brings us back to where we were just a few minutes ago, where we were talking about um, the fact that you'd done all this work and you were giving it away for free. And we now know it was months of work, 
Um, so lots and lots and lots of hours and soul searching and f- fiddling and big decision. You you have that moment where you decide to give it away for free um, w- instead of going down that path of marketing it and trying to sell it and, and what have you. Was that the right decision? Are you happy um, months on now that you gave it away for nothing? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. One of the best decisions I ever made. Hmm. What's been the consequence of giving it away for free? Um, one of the things that I would definitely say is the amount of positive feedback and love from the community for it. It was really, really motivating. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those typical freelancers working from home. And, and all this motivation that, I, that came from the community, it kept my spirit up. <laughs> mm. And uh, that's one. The other thing is, is it, it, it's really an amazing experience to, to launch a product like that and, and see like what can be actually achieved. Yeah. And, and it's, it's just basically um, there is a buy me a coffee button, obviously. <laughs> yeah. And uh, with full honesty, I received uh, quite a few donations. This oh. can be from this can be from like one Canadian dollar to twenty five euros. So um, I received like numerous different currencies, <laughs> and because of that, I had to say myself that okay, so it is justified to carry on and grow the the pack even bigger yes and keep and keep it as a free resource for everyone that's a wonderful moment isn't it when you realize that you've given away something for free and yet people are still paying you for it <laughs> that's great yes um yeah i know exactly what you mean i mean if you think about it wordpress itself is clearly built um, and given away for nothing you know we know that it's not quite as simple as that but the fact of the matter is if wordpress had decided to charge for its services um, to download it we probably wouldn't be talking about wordpress at all and not to say that your stuff you know katka wouldn't have um, grown in the way it has but certainly you would have been in a different battle you would have been in a marketing battle you would have been spending your own money to try and get some money back Um, whereas this you're in a a very nice situation it's it's been very well received it's been downloaded many 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 times and and all of a sudden your product is being used and ultimately that's what you would like i guess yes yeah just you know for it to be used by other people do you um do you plan now that this work has been achieved and you've got Katka out there and you've got many many users? You've just mentioned a, a, like a one point two. Do you do you plan on modifying it over time and keep keep updating it, or is it kind of done now? There it is. I'm not. I'm just going to tweak it every so often, or, or are you still going to spend considerable amounts of your own time on it? Um, there is plenty more to come, if I may say so. So basically. Katka pages, um, or as I like to call it, there will be a new page template uh, every two or three weeks. Wow. So um, the only thing that I'm doing right now is going back to the drawing board, uh, get my demos out of the closet, and upgrading them to my latest ideas. And also, at the same time, uh, I would definitely have to mention that these Katka pages are mainly made for Elementor Pro, but at the same time, I'm modifying them for Elementor Free. So for example, when you have a Forms widget in Elementor Pro that is being replaced with something like Contact Form 7 styled up, and you can actually have it free in the upcoming GeneratePress sites. Yes. Yeah. I, do you know what? We'll we'll talk about that now, shall we? Because that's a perfect moment for it. Um, those of you that are um, users of Tom Osborne's Generate Press, um, and if you're on his mailing lists and in his Facebook groups and things, you'll know that he's got this wonderful product um, coming online. We've whether we have all released it or not, I don't know. But there is a podcast episode with Tom about this exact thing. Um, so you've you've got in touch with Tom, or Tom reached out to you, and you've decided to amalgamate a lot of your experience with Katka into 
uh, generate press one click sites. That's cool. Tell us about that. Um, me being part of the sites project, if I if I can say it like that, um, it was partially thanks to Tom and another awesome friend of mine called Paul Lacey. Yeah, great guy. So um, they decided, or I should say, Tom decided that um, I would be a good fit. And uh, I'm super happy that I was considered to be part of this project. Uh, there are some amazing creators in there. Mm. And it made my life so much happier because I can show my page designs to even more people. Mm -hmm. And with full honesty, I so much love Generate Press. Yeah. It's, it's just the go-to theme for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to say to, to anyone to go with Generate Press only. <laughs> it works for you. It, it, it works for me. And Generate Press sites will be something amazing for, uh, in the same kind of spirit as, as Kotka was designed originally. So we should probably very briefly just describe this situation. The idea is that in the um, WordPress admin, you'll have the Generate Press menu, um, and then there'll be a sub menu uh, labeled Sites. And if you click on that, you'll see kind of thumbnails of pre-designed sites with multiple pages and what have you. And you click a button um, and basically get a brand new site, which in your case is going to be just taking the exact same elements from uh, Katka and dropping them in. So w with Generate Press Sites, is there, and Katka, I should say, are you, you still require Elementor or is this standalone stuff that doesn't require Elementor? It still, it, it still requires Elementor, okay. but all the uh, Generate Press Sites that I'm creating personally will be using Elementor's free version. Right, yes. So basically the idea is to give the decision to the actual user which version he or she would like to use. So if you say that you don't want um, Elementor Pro, well, not yet, but you already have Generate Press Premium, for example, for the sites, you can, uh, you can import one of the Kotka pages and you will be completely fine with Elementor Free. Mm. But if you decide that you would like to use Elementor Pro with it, or with any other theme in that uh, matter, you can download the free to download Katka uh, I see. template pack, yep. and those will be ready for Elementor Pro. It sounds like a match made in heaven. You know, you've done this stuff for uh, uh, Elementor, Katka, and it's been a, a roaring success. And then along comes Generate Press and offers you um, the, the chance to expose more of this Katka within generate press it sounds like this is a real nice moment in your life you must be delighted that after so much hard work uh, everything seems to be coming together beautifully yes I, I'm, I'm super happy about it yeah yeah I'm, I'm looking at the um i'm looking at your template packs at the moment as it's as it happens i'm um i'm browsing the the testimonials layouts i can see some really nice clean designs as you said without um without too much in the way of colorful and color and all of that so you don't have to strip it all out just the, the wireframe if you like now i'm a as you know i'm a bit of a big beaver builder user do you have any do you have any plans to bring this to other page builders aside from elementor or are you entirely happy with where you're at there um hopefully i'm okay to say this but personally i'm not going to do this for any other page builders mm, it's okay but there are amazing surprises in the <laughs> oven. So you're saying something, but not saying something. That's very good. Okay, we'll assume there's news down the road, but we won't know when that's coming or how that's coming. Right, I'm going to talk to you when <laughs> we finish the call in that case. <laughs> oh, that's great. So um, let, let's move away from Katka. We've, we've had a, okay. a nice discussion about Katka, and that's brilliant. I want to just talk about a, a couple of other aspects to your life, because... Um, Barna, it turns out, is from um, Hungary. Now, you also have like a, a different life. You have this other world where obviously you speak uh, Hungarian and you, ha you have sort of like a, well, I don't know how to describe it. We use the word celebrity. That's probably the wrong word. But you, you are one of the few people that does 
WordPress tutorial videos uh, in Hungarian. You've kind of cornered that niche. T tell us about this. Yes. Um, the thing is, most of the Hungarians who, who are in this, uh, like WordPress or any other online world, they can speak English relatively okay to understand English tutorials. Yep. But um, my main idea usually behind my, my um, tutorials, even in English, is that if my mother can understand it, everyone can understand it. Yeah. Yep. So why would I ask someone to learn a different language to get started? Yes. And because of that, uh, I created a twin of my English YouTube channel. And at the moment, I'm already started to do <laughs> stupid little coffee break vlogs as well, which people kind of like uh, because it's, you know, no seriousness, just let's talk about stuff, all the news and interesting stuff from the WordPress world. And to to kickstart the, the actual tutorial creation in Hungary, in, in Hungary on the Hungarian language, I have created a website to support this. So I'm not trying to overtake the whole YouTube video because, well, sadly, currently I'm, I'm one of the main WordPress tutorial creators there. Um, I created this website that you can say uh, that you can check out as wptest.hu with an S Z as, as written in Hungarian. And that's basically just like a demo creator. So you have DV, you have Elementor with Generate Press, and you have another theme that was created by an Hungarian uh, team called Fever. The whole point of this is to give an opportunity for anyone to, to create tutorial videos or teach their clients or friends or, or anyone how to use WordPress and especially that system if required without spending any money on it. Mm. So if you would like to create a tutorial video for, I don't know, the new Elementor 2.0 blocks, for example, then you don't have to worry about it. You just uh, request a demo and you have half an hour to do whatever you like as an administrator. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. I like that idea. So um, presumably, now I could be wrong about this. You just said that um, Hungarian people on the whole can speak uh, English. Um, does, that, does that mean that they can speak English to a, to a sort of high level like you clearly can? Um, or they can, you know, they've learned it at school and, and what have you, because it strikes me that when you're trying to explain something um, fairly technical, like how to use a, a content management system like WordPress, the, the subtleties of the language might really rob you of understanding. So doing it in your native language presumably is going to make it a whole lot easier, not only because there's a whole load of people who simply don't speak English, but also that the technicalities are not lost on them. Um, yeah, so basically um, we, we have to start to learn languages in, in early primary school. Right. Um, I've been in, <laughs> this will be an interesting one. I almost <laughs> failed in, in, in fourth class when we, we just started to learn English. And I completely, utterly failed because I didn't have any interest in learning English. Right. <laughs> but my teacher was kind enough and she said, okay, well, it's the fourth grade, so just move on. You've been a good student in everything else. <laughs> but if you don't do it properly next year, you will be failed. So... At that time, a game I really like called Fallout 2 came oh, out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, God. And, and whoever knows the game, they know that to succeed in the game, you have to be able to have a proper conversation in English. <laughs> so the whole summertime went with playing Fallout 2, and I managed to catch up and never had to worry about English ever since. <laughs> That's a great story. Ah, oh, that's cool. So you basically, you learn English via video gaming. <laughs> I did, yes. Well, that, I mean, that's r really, really sort of fascinating that you've got this sort of double world. You've got the, the Elementor side of things. Well, actually, triple world, really. You've got the Elementor side of things with Katka, 
which is doing really well for you. You've got something on the horizon um, with Generate Press, which I think is going to be huge. Um, that's my guess. I know the, the Generate Press community is already massive and adding some huge functionality with this Generate Press sites, I think is going to make it only more popular. And then you've got this um, kind of video tutorial uh, thing going on in Hungarian, but you don't just do Hungarian videos, do you? You also do, uh, I've noticed you've got a, another site called wpress.zone, um, where at the bottom, if I'm right, you've got like a video tutorials thing in the footer. And you've, you have spent quite a long time doing video tutorials in English as well. Um, so, you know, you really are, you, you really are giving a lot of your time for nothing. Yeah, well, um, that's just me. I mean, <laughs> with, 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 with all honesty, and this is just uh, icing on the cake because I do my fair share of community work as being director of part of the director's board in our uh, community's weekend school and hmm. many other bits and bobs. <laughs> You're a you're a, a a go-to nice guy that likes to give back, and I think that's what this community thrives upon, isn't it? There's um there's an awful lot of stuff out there constantly trying to pitch you and sell you and part you with your money. It's very very there is something deeply refreshing and deeply genuine about when you come across somebody who's you know you're making a success of it, but at the same time you're given an awful lot of your um your time and energies for free. So. I would say thank you very much indeed for all the stuff that you've been doing. You're very welcome. And as I said, many more to come. Yeah, <laughs> we've, um, we, we, I think um, we'll probably knock it on the head at this point. We're well over half an hour now, which is just perfect for our podcast. Where can we, would you like to list, I suppose, the, the areas, the, the websites, the URLs, the Twitter handles, whatever, um, where people can reach out to you should they have an interest in any of the myriad things that you do? Yes. Um, well, the main website for our topic is elementortemplatepack.com is for the Kotka Elementor Template Pack. Okay. But if any, anyone would require my assistance or support in their own projects, they can reach me at wpress.zone. Uh, that I'm available as a freelancer in case you need any help. And uh, for my English YouTube channel with the tutorials, you can find me at youtube.com slash WPressZone in one. Okay, that's great. Thank you. I mean, I would say anybody who is looking for some inspiration, um, you know, you've got yourself a new client and you've got a website to build, and you've decided that you want to use a page builder and that page builder is Elementor. You should, there is no doubt in my mind that you should be checking this out. I know that it's been adopted uh, far and wide. And a guest that we had on the, the podcast a few weeks ago, Troy Dean, has been, uh, has been using it and asking you questions about it and praising it. So certainly go and check it out because it'll save you an awful lot of time. It's not going to do, as as um, Barna said, it's not going to do all the styling for you. It's not going to make it the finished product, but it's going to it's going to save you 50% of the upfront time getting your stuff up and running. So there we go. It's elementortemplatepack.com. And I will, I will say thank you, Barna, for joining us on the WP Builds podcast. Thank you for having me. You are very, very welcome. And today's ending fact comes from an article at www.impactbnd.com, and there'll be the link below. And it's fact four on their article, which is the average human attention span has declined from 12 seconds in the year 2000 to eight seconds now. This is much shorter than the attention span of a goldfish at nine seconds. Wow. That's just amazing. How can we have a shorter attention span than a goldfish? I mean, who knows if there's any truth in this, but it's such a lovely analogy, isn't it? The idea that humans have been reduced to the attention span of a goldfish, whereas before they were far superior with 12 seconds. <laughs> and I, I think probably they're not listening to anything we're saying from this point. I think we'd probably get as far as actually reading this statement. 
and that's it. <laughs> Attention's all gone. We could say what we like yeah. now. I wonder what it means, though. You know, is it the attention span to... Because it certainly isn't for video. The attention mm. span for watching um, film and television has, I would have thought, gone through the roof. Um, but the attention span perhaps to reading black on white text, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's pro probably making the point we've always had, isn't it? We've got to grab people right away on our websites with stuff that's going to interest them yes. and not waste their time. Yeah. None of these welcome messages. Welcome to my website. <laughs> Basically, you need to, uh, on the first page of the website, it should say, here's my phone number, phone, give us a call now, immediately phone up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's it. That's all you got. But honestly, I wonder if this is a problem that, is is a bit fake you know i wonder if the victorians had a 50 second attention span or a attention span of six minutes uh or is this just getting worse over time in other words did cavemen have an infinite attention span yeah. which is you know it's like a, a bell curve or something it's just slow not a bell curve you know anyway mm. a curve which is slowly getting worse over time but I would have thought that humanity will deal with this. You know, if, if yeah. everybody's attention span is nine seconds or below, that's going to become the new normal. And, and when I get older, I will be able to berate young children by saying, you can't concentrate like I used to do. <laughs> I'll believe this one when we start getting more inquiries from goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I don't know how they do. That's what we need. We need a goldfish section for the website. That's, that's all there is to it. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice pithy little one to remember, isn't it? But it, yeah. it does tell of, you know, too much screen time, too much um, stuff that's boom, 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 and, you know, kind of all in your face, little time to reflect. I wonder if it's good or bad. I don't know. I don't know whether it's good or bad, but if it's true, it is a thing. Right. Yeah. Should we knock it on the head? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. I don't want to know about this anymore. Right. Okay. In which case, thanks for listening to the WP Builds podcast. Once again, my name's Nathan Wrigley. And I'm David Wormsley. See you next week. And cheesy music rolls in, as always. Have a lovely week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.